What's up guys, as you can tell by the title in today's video, I ended up going against the popular consensus of one of our previous polls where I asked if you wanted an entire length video or separated into factions. Turns out I don't have time to do a full length video and also a single video would be a nightmare to export. Think of it this way, now I have more time to talk about all the factions in more length. Speaking of polls, there's currently a poll up about what hero I should do an analysis on next since I just finished the Peacekeeper one. Go ahead in the pinned comment or description and vote on who you would like to see next as that poll won't stay open much longer and I promise I will take that into actual account this time. Also, yes, I plan on making a video on the new finishers once they release on the 9th and get a good look at them. I'll work on a video then and it will most likely be the next video. Finally, please hit the like button if you end up enjoying this video as that'll help get the video out to other people so more people can get the chance to watch it too. Try not to take this video too seriously either as I'm just going to be giving a few of my thoughts and opinions on this no longer relevant subject, unless of course Ubisoft brings these animations back, which who knows, they've been full of surprises as of late. Also, I tried to get as much footage of the heroes from the campaign as possible, but they don't have nearly enough opportunities to show the minion animations, so thank you to the person who archived these animations, link will be in the description to their video as well. To start, we will look at Warden, which has always been one of the best animations. They promoted his minion kill animations in the trailers and early gameplay, and it's probably going to be a big reason of why a lot of people got into this game early on. I think that practicality wise his animations are very good until he inverts his blade but I'll speak more of that in a second. When using a light attack the warden half swords and focuses on one minion at a time but then move over to heavy attacks and it's wide arcing swings that hit multiple opponents at once. If I had to come up with some minion killing animations this is probably what I would come up with as well. Now at some point you can actually invert the sword and mord how the minions and even do wide arcing swings that hit multiple of them as well. Now this is incredibly cool and I will not argue with the rule of cool that is at play here, but it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't point it out. Essentially the only reason to invert your sword to do a hilt strike is in a very situational scenario where you're fighting an armored opponent and the sword blade is not going to pierce or cut through their armor. Although it is a viable technique, it is not as simple as turning your sword into a mace. You most definitely wouldn't want to swing your sword around as wildly as the warden does here. For overall style, I give this a 10 out of 10. This animation brings back memories of some simpler times for this game that I will cherish deeply. But for actual practicality, I give it an 8 out of 10. I would say it's a high 8 though, almost a 9, just because most of the stuff works really well and it's only being held back by the inverting of the sword and hitting minions with the pommel. It's just a bit ludicrous if you ask me. Next we have Peacekeeper, and you probably know what I'm going to say about her. I mean, even for in-game use, it was a bit too flamboyant. I know assassins aren't supposed to mid-clear, but if you ever tried to do it as PK and use her animations, you would frequently be sitting and doing overly long animations and getting hit from all sides. Now, you could probably imagine that it wouldn't fly that well in real life either. To double down on that even more, we have seen that in the Peacekeeper analysis, her strengths rely on her ability to perform quick strikes and moving quickly. Nothing about hitting the same minion three times is quick. Neither is rolling over a minion and doing a cool dagger kill without looking. Now with all that said, I understand why they did what they did, and this looks cool and flashy for trailers and such. So for style, I'm going to give her a 7 out of 10 because I think it looks very cool and intriguing, but you have to seriously suspend your disbelief to think that any of this is possible. In my opinion, you do not need to make a character outrageously unrealistic to make them also look cool and flashy, and I think Warden is a prime example of that. As for practicality, she gets a 4 out of 10. She was in fact using her swords and her cuts don't look that bad, but add in all the twirling and flipping and redundant cuts and you end up with something that just belongs more in a Hollywood film than it does on a battlefield. And just because I know I'll get these comments even though I've stated this unendingly on my channel, but I might as well say it again, yes, I know it's a video game. That's also why I'm not as harsh as I could be. This is also a YouTube video and isn't meant to be taken so seriously. Take a deep breath and relax. Next we have Centurion and it is very unique. I will give it that. I talked about how Centurion fights the exact opposite of how a soldier of the Roman Empire would have fought back in my Centurion analysis, but in short, he is very chauvinistic in the way that he fights. Granted, he looks really cool, and I think him punching a minion 10 feet into the air looks awesome, but at the end of the day, I unfortunately had to say that no one would use a Gladius like this, ever. For his style, he definitely gets an 8 out of 10, but for practicality, he gets a 2. 
Next, we have Conqueror, and his is very plain in my opinion. For starters, I actually do like how the use of the flail is here. As you can see, he uses large sweeping motions and goes for exposed parts of the minions like their legs. He also incorporates his shield bash into his moves, which is kind of neat, but I've already given my full thoughts on the shield bash in his analysis that I've done. Past that though, I wish he would have kept his shield up more during the swings, and I wish he would have been much wider with the swings that target multiple minions rather than what we see here in game. I understand that he has his zone attack as well, which can accomplish this and actually also blocks attacks, but it also prevents him from moving, and I wouldn't really consider it a minion killing animation. In short, I'd only give him a 5 out of 10 for style, and also only a 5 out of 10 for practicality. They had a lot of good ideas, but fell short in the end. Next, we have Lawbringer, and normally I wouldn't consider a Poleaxe as a weapon that is designed for multi-combatant battlefield use, i.e. clearing out a field of minions by yourself with it. A polearm much more well-suited for battlefield use, in my opinion, would be the Halberd, but if you wanted a deeper explanation of that, the analysis that I've done on it will explain it much better. But as for the attacks we have here, I'd say it's very Poleaxe-like and very versatile. It uses both sides of the Poleaxe to hit the enemy with, and he also uses large sweeping motions to clear out groups of enemies. In some strikes, he uses the butt of the weapon and then the head, and overall looks very competent with it. Some of the bad things, I'd say, is in some cases, he only uses one hand on the weapon. For such a top-heavy weapon like this, I'd say that it is quite ill-advised to try this, as it would make it hard to maintain a proper control and grip with a single hand. That is how you get disarmed. For style, I give him a 9 out of 10, and for practicality, I give him an 8 out of 10, although straight up flipping a person isn't very realistic, and he could have a much better grip when doing some of the moves. Overall, he has a pretty solid concept of poleaxe moves, albeit in a very video gamey caricature of it. Finally, we have Gladiator. His is a difficult one, as what could I really cite or describe as a battlefield use of a trident? I already talked about the difficulties of using a trident in my Gladiator analysis, and how there was a reason spears were much more common than tridents throughout the history of warfare. Regardless, I don't have any real issue with the light attacks, as they are essentially stabbing with the trident, which isn't unusual to say the least, except when he flips a minion like a bale of hay, but I'm pretty sure they did that one just because it's hilarious. But once he starts doing heavy attacks, that's when things get questionable. He swings the trident to hit his opponent with the edges. Now I talked about this a bit in the original Gladiator videos, but to reiterate, this could be feasible if the trident has edges that can be used to cut with. And as we have seen with some of Gladiator's weapon options, some of them do have blade-like edges, and some of them do not. I would say the ones that do not would not be very heavy enough to do any significant blunt damage, at least not enough to reliably and instantly kill someone. For overall style, I'd say that this is about a 7 out of 10, but for practicality, I'd say it's about a 5 out of 10. To be fair, there isn't much you can really do with the trident on a battlefield, so it's hard for me to make good judgment of his capabilities, but for what we were given, I suppose it's fine. That about wraps up this one. Don't forget to go vote in the poll and hit the like button on this video. Be sure to look out for the video of the new unique finishers that are going to be released soon. Shout out to my YouTube members, particularly Grant Bork, VodkaLover420, and ShadowEagle04 for being the highest tier of members. If you'd like to become a member as well, the join button is down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button as it helps get the video out to others. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or favorite minion killing animations that you'd like to share, then go ahead and leave them down below. Like always, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Peace.